Shalom Israel coming back again today do a little bit more work my time is off on my thing here so don't if it's showing a certain time and date it's wrong first I'd like to give honor to the Most High Father the Creator Abba of Abraham Isaac and Jacob today well, y'all know what today is. If you die, you, if you lie, you die. Line them all up against the wall. We're lining them up all up against the wall. If we find that they're not telling the truth, that's it. Leave them alone. Don't sit back and try to argue with them no more. Don't sit back and try to explain nothing to them no more. They, they're, they, they're trying to play little tricks. They're sending certain people out onto our uh, websites to distract us. Don't fall for the trick. Know your enemy. Art of war. See, I don't want to get caught up in too much of this uh, battling, writing back and forth. I want, I want, if you got something really to say to me, I want to sit back and look at you face to face I want, to, want you to step into this lion's cage everybody wants to die I mean everybody wants to go to heaven nobody wants to die step into this lion's cage if you man enough whatever step up into the lion's cage don't write don't write no crap to me step into the lion's cage we can do it over phone, we can do it over the internet, whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. Step to the step into the lion's cage. If you lie, you die. All right. I'm going to be using some books. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be using book coming Josephus. I got a book of Josephus here. Uh, I'm going to be using the Bible, King James, Tartum version. I told you about this book I have about uh, the raping of their own women, the white women, the Persian women, white and Turk women. I'm going to be reading and quoting from some of this work here today. Uh, I'll be most likely jumping around into lost scripts. I haven't pulled out I haven't pulled out my Hebrew English translations yet, but we will be going over these things. Like I said, I got many books here and we're just gonna go piece by piece, little by little, so we can all get a better understanding. I wanna learn more myself. And if any of you can uh understand some of this here, and maybe you have a piece of the puzzle, you know, please bring it to the table. All right. We're gonna start on G O C C today. All right. Uh Rumble, young man, rumble to Lex Will. Rumble, young man, rumble, rumble to lie to me no more. Let's let's check out GOCC. See what they're talking about. Answer: Many females with this one quick understanding. And then after this next week, I'll go further into our regular prophetic lessons on the Sabbath, all right? Now, and I'm going to talk about the advanced lessons also. But before I go there, we've been getting, uh, we've been getting questions. I went into the email and noted that we have a few questions on uh, the virgin birth. And of course, we handled the full, complete lesson within the academy, but I wanted to address a few things concerning that, and I want y'all to hear this real quick. And the reason I'm going to just touch on it real quick is because now we've found that others who've been examining our teachings and can't dispute that the Most High have been using the teachings are now pointing to the teachings of the virgin birth to claim, just to try to pick something out to claim that, okay, this is false. Therefore, don't listen. Let's All right, you heard what he just said. 
All right, I'm not even ready to battle with him. I'm just going I'm gonna let him let him do what he do. Let him do what he do. He lie, he die. All right, he just claimed that we, I, us, tried to use the virgin birth as an excuse. Now, you must remember, the Lord God said he's not the author of confusion. So that only leaves the Lord who's the author of confusion. So we're going to find out who he's serving. Let me make this clear. And I'm going to say this, and I wanted to do this publicly. On a regular Sabbath lesson outside the academy. So that if this recording is downloaded and utilized, our words would be clear with that, that, that particular downloader when they upload our video. Okay, I got you. Come on. We do believe in the virgin birth. Uh oh. Here we go. Now, we have already proved who the Lord was over and over and over again. Now they can consist on people can insist on using the Lord and giving him different names. Changing his color, giving him a new name. You know, if I fart in the balloon, a white balloon, and paint the white balloon red, and somebody comes in and busts that balloon, what's going to come out? It's not that same funk that I tried to hide in that balloon. Ain't that what's going to come out? The gas inside the balloon is released. Oh, he's already to hit a strike. How can you believe in the virgin birth? If Jesus is not real, Jesus Christ is not real, that means his mother's story about his mother can't be real. But we're going to rename him and call him this, and we're going to believe in a virgin birth anyway. <laughs> but we don't believe in the virgin birth according to the Ooh. Holy Catholic Church. We believe in the virgin birth according to Scripture. And the virgin birth we believe in according to Scripture is the true breakdown of what the word virgin means. Also, by no shape or form do we believe that it minimizes Christ's position as Son of the Most High. And what do we mean by that? What do you mean by that, Son of the Morning Star? That's what you mean by that. Revelations 22. See, you already got me started, buddy. See, you should have just kept your mouth shut. Revelations 22. 22 and 16, if I'm not mistaken, y'all. Revelations 22 and 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the church I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star second chronicles 18 and 18 I'm quoting from it I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the hosts of heavens standing on his left hand and on his right I mean on his right hand and on his left hand. People remember the picture of the eagle I showed you? Remember all the pictures I've been showing you there? Okay, we're going to go to the same chapter, verse 20. Then there came out a lying spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? He said, 
And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt even so. Do so, even so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put an evil, a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil. It don't say the Most High spoke in evil. It don't even say God spoke in evil. In that case, it says Lord. Christ is Lord, right? Right? Alright. In, Gen- in Revelation 22, he calls himself the bright and morning star. The bright and morning star is the system that fell. The fallen one. says he's going to send out a lying spirit he was going to speak evil Isaiah 14 12 oh how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning go to verse 13 now all right for thou hast said in thine heart I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. Morning stars, throne. Destroyer. See what I mean, people? See what I mean? Blasphemy! That's all they do. Deceive my people. This guy here is a host of a host. After he after he fulfills his contract, he becomes I am like Nimrod. Something like that. Let's see what else he's saying. Christ was Slice the and dice. of the Most High before there was any such word as Mary. Okay? He was great. Wait, 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 wait. What did he just say? Christ, Jesus, was the son of God before there was even a Mary going into this book the lost scripts Christ (laughs) what is Christ what did he say Christ was let's go to Jubilees I want to go to Jubilees first. I got to go to Jubilees first. Jubilees 2 and 20. I have chosen the offspring of Jacob from among all that I have seen and have written him down as my firstborn son and have sanctified him to myself forever and ever and I will teach them the Sabbath that they may keep Sabbath on it from all work but he just said that was the book of Jubilees a book that he quotes from this guy quotes from that book that very same book I just read from he quotes from it they do this one he's like the warlock it's a gin type thing going on here mixture between wood and stone 
Remember I was talking to you about the battery, the gin in the bottle that starts your car up, that gives you light inside your house, the transformer? All of this works the same, people. All of this works the same. How can you tell me I don't believe in Jesus, but I believe in Christ? Huh? And then you're going to, in another program, you're going to tell me, the, uh, quote some stuff out of me out of Jubilees, but forget that? No, that's not what he's doing, people. He's pulling all these people in to call on, make him as one of those men. He promised that if he can get this many to follow. You got to understand too, we got a lot of spies out here. You can't trust nobody, no group, none. You thought you could church your, trust your church. See how many times they pass the offering tray on your Sunday. Sun worship. Tammuz. The wood. It's in all his power since the creation before Mary. Now, in order to understand this, you must know what the Christian churches are trying to promote. By saying Christ came without a physical father, it's really upholding Mary as a female deity above all women on earth. As a goddess, it has little to do with what, what they're claiming about Christ, but it's more so the upholding of a Babylonian deity who now they're calling Mary. See that, people? Look at the trickery he's pulling on you, man. I see this, man, this magician's not pulling it on me. He's playing with babies. That's the only reason he can do this people that has to be spoon fed because they're too lazy to learn, learn for themselves you can never stop learning when you think you got the answer guess what you're wrong that's when you become I am have these Christian people come tell me about their Jesus their Jesus and how I'm going to hell well now you just don't put yourself as my as a judge over me you just said I am ain't that what the Lord do line his ass up on a wall I'm not done with you so I want to touch on a few things and get some understanding so that others cannot come to our site or send letters and misinterpret what we are teaching. Why? It's easy to see someone who's new and learning and say, well, okay, we've been following the teachings, but this urgent thing, we don't understand what their take on this is. Because they're fairly new and they've learned virgin birth like all of us from, from the time we knew how to read, they will immediately think something is uh, 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 heretical or wrong concerning the teachings of the virgin birth. So while I can't go into the whole thing right now, I can break down what we understand and believe so that others cannot interpret it. Did you hear what he just said? Be like Eve. Word, sound, power. Be like Eve. I know sometimes when I talk, I know I got a backwards way of talking and really I get nervous around on the camera and stuff like that I'm not that type of person <laughs> right now I'm forcing myself to make sure I get this message out for my own seed I want my own seed to wake up so I'm trying my best word sound power be like Eve believe that's what he just said 
I know sometimes I mess up and I say little things. We all do. But this dude is supposed to be a professional. Uh, uh, what you call that? Theologian. Whatever you call him. Look at him. Slickster. Slickster. And he knows it. He knows it. Okay? So if you have any questions about the virgin birth, come back to this video and it will be answered quickly. <laughs> now, in this book called The Two Babylons, the first of the papal worship. And this is by Reverend Alexander Hislop. Now, this is actually a reprint from the original Two Babylons, but what is this book speaking of? This book is showing or paralleling the Roman Catholic Church with the rituals of ancient Babylon. What, what, what happens when you realize that the virgin birth that you've been taught is really not the virgin birth of Christ at all? That's our point. Now, people, if I turn to the beginning of the New Testament, and the beginning of the New Testament goes against the beginning of Genesis, shouldn't alarms start to go off? Shouldn't alarms just ring inside your head? But this, this little slickster that found a way to go around it. And he's going to use it to the maximum. But we're going to see if we can just chop him up. The Christ that you are learning in churches to have nothing to do with the Christ written up in Scripture. You got your armor, right? There was a virgin birth before Christ and Mary existed. And that's the virgin birth you're following in the Western world. The Roman Catholic Church brought you, after being enslaved, a new Christ. Just use Christ's name, but this dude is full of it. I got a book here that uh, I was referred to get this book by, I think it was Lex Williams. I seen him talking about the book, and I got the book so I can help further educate my daughter and in this book it talks about and we have another book uh, one of them is called American and its people and the other one's called uh, American Holocaust and another one's called Mystery of the Mexican Pyramids now in this book I think it's the Mexican Pyramid and in uh, American and its people it talks about Cortez and how Cortez and you can look this up you can even watch a video you have no excuse not to learn I don't feel like pulling that book out because I got a whole bunch of books I'm going to be going from today already in front of me I'm bringing out two new books today uh, <clears throat> but Cortez he hiked up into this mountain area and up in this mountain area, it was real cloudy and everything, and you know, like a mountain would be, a high mountain. And this was the fastest route he could take. The other route he had to take to get to where he was trying to go would have took him longer. But I want to talk about the part where he's coming down this mountain. When he comes down this mountain, as the people see him, him and him and his soldiers and dogs and crosses and images they see these white people riding, uh, riding on these four legged beasts that looked like they was one beast altogether one thing half human half 
hearts to them and these dogs and the cross the wooden cross and their swords and their cannons and their followers they look like gods coming out from the heavens walking out from the sky there's your cross your wood your Jesus if you go into uh, the wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 start at verse 12 go down to 21, 23 something like that it tells you what they did and how they did it this guy's lying it was really Talmuds and Simramuses an example, Talmuz was a Babylonian virgin child that was worshipped every Sunday in ancient Babylon. Now he just told on himself, people. He's telling you the truth right here. But he's going to tell you that what he's doing is different. And it's different even from the Christians and everybody else, but he's doing the same thing. His thing is he's going to say, well, no, it w his mom wasn't a virgin. So which is it? A virgin or not? And in that case, which is it? Was she Hebrew or was she Gentile? Because we know the uh, Pharisee and scribes that took over the land, which was no more than the Turk, Muslims, and the uh, uh, Greek Gentiles, heathen and the Gentiles. That's all that was with a little mix of Persian and everybody else that's all that was so what is he doing what is he saying well now his man was born from a, a, a from David the king line if that's the case then uh, we have some problems you understand so let's get Talmud out of scripture real quick and then I'll read some excerpts from the two Babylons to prove to you that the virgin child you worshiping on Sunday is not Christ at all. So when we speak of the virgin birth, it's good to break down every piece of it instead of just saying that, well, he didn't, he didn't come to a virgin. He did come to a virgin, but not the virgin they are teaching you about. That's the point. We're going to give you the understanding of virgin according to scripture. Okay? Let's read Tom Moves. Uh, this is Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 14. Go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 14. That's his that's his weapon of choice. Ezekiel chapter 8 and 14. Let's go. Been waiting on that damn talking. All right, let's go. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, go ahead. where I was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. There sat women weeping for who? There sat women weeping for Tammuz. There sat wo women weeping for Tammuz. And then he showed a greater uh, an abomination that the elders or the wise men was facing the east towards the sun, S U N, connecting Tammuz. To the worshiping on Sunday. Let's read it. Uh, verse 15. Go ahead. Then said he unto me, Has thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than thee. Now, when you have women weeping for Talmuz, the example is when you go in, on, in church on Sundays, you see the women crying for Jesus. All right. There he goes. I had a lot to say, but I'm skipping over a lot of it to try to buy some, buy some, 
bypass some time because if I don't, I know what he's going to come up with. And I know I don't have a lot of time. So you got to excuse me if I let him talk a lot on here. Yeah, that's that's on purpose there. Just let him go with what he has to go. All right. But is now he just talked about Tom Moves and people weeping over Tom Moves. Just because you give you give your savior a different name. All right. Isn't it not the same? Isn't it not the same? Didn't the most high in Genesis six and four condemn the uh angels for sleeping with the women and the women for sleeping with the angels? So what's going on in Matthews in the beginning of Matthews there? Okay, so now he wants to prove that she uh really wasn't a virgin then. That's I guess that's where we get ready to go to. I guess that's where, okay. That's nowhere in the New Testament. You don't see this happening nowhere throughout the New Testament when Christ was on the earth. So, so it must have a primal origin. Sunday worship and women crying every Sunday, that's Babylonian. Here's a greater abomination. Read. Verse 16. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord. Go ahead. Behold. The porch between the porch and the altar Go ahead. were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. And they worshiped the sun toward the east. They worshiped the sun towards the east. Sunday worship. And what does he do? He worshiped worship the most high supposedly but he worships the not, no, I can't say the most high he worshiped his ha, ha or whatever he says it I don't like calling out these names but he worships him on the most high Sabbath no the most high said he the Sabbath was for him his offspring honored that by doing the same thing but the Lord comes in and says, hey, no, the Sabbath is mine, and I'm going to change it to Sunday. We'll talk about all these things. How they altered time and all this. This is what the Lord did. That's why he's God over you. Sunday worship has its origin in Babylonian uh, uh, history. Now listen, Tom Moose, when you do the research, do it yourself. Tom Moose was a virgin child of Semiramis. Oh boy, he's, he's getting some weapons, buddy. Well, we yeah, already talked about quick. We've already talked about this. This goes back to the moon goddess. All right, Artemis. It goes back to the moon goddess, the great uh, Diana that fell, that sent the sign from Jupiter onto this earth. Acts 1935. All right, cutting his, we cutting his stuff short. He's trying to make it look like he's doing something. Trust me. Acts 1935, and if you. If you go into 19, it's just start at verse 1, because it's all in there. And we're going to be discussing these things. All right. So run your armor. Come on. What you got? Is your defense? I know you've seen this before. Here, I'm going to show you just a few pictures. See that big egg right there? See the egg with the snake around it right there? See the egg with the horns right there? A with the horns. It's not a horn. It's, it's a moon. Crescent moon. It goes back to Artemis. Isis. Remember what I just said. Diana. Isis. Artemis. And there's more names than that. Uh, I got uh, a guy I listened to named Zen Garcia. And we, I wanted to read from some of his books today. Uh, Mr. Zen Garcia. You got a lot of information there. Sons of God by Zen Garcia. 
uh, it's one of his books I read from and you find when you read from these book his books you find these other scripts that you never knew that existed so I went out and I bought these scripts I start buying them piece by piece here piece by piece there all right all right maybe some of them I didn't buy some of them I got them off the internet to tartums you can get off the internet you can get them from Zing Garcia dot com all right far as I know uh, I think that's how you would say it just look up Zen Garcia and he can send you what is the Tartums and the Tartums your King James Bible is no more than a Tartums that's all it is your King James Bible was translated from this book if you understand what I'm telling you here yes it does come from the Hebrew okay but they used that to document to make sure everything was accurate to fit along with the, to this from the Hebrew then from here it was translated into what you now know as a Bible Josephus some people believe in him some people don't I don't believe in him in the way of how <laughs> they betray him on TV or what you look at this dude <laughs> is supposed to live during the Christ of the time of Christ Rob Rack which is just gave a class was just gave a class about where we're going to be going at today in the book of the two Babylons for those who, who, who you wonder why people have a ornaments on their on their uh, their mantel pieces. They claim Semiramis came down the goddess and hatched out of an egg on the river Euphrates, the mother of Tammuz. This is your Easter or Esther, another name for Semiramis, or AKA Mary. Now you just heard him just say that. See, he's giving you enough of the truth, dazzling, the glitter. Let me tell you something. Everything that is glitter and shines is not diamond and gold. Don't be tricked. He just told you, Mary. But then he's going to turn back around and... <laughs> yeah, snake around the egg, goddess of fertility, it's all Babylonian and pagan. So when you believe in the virgin birth as the Roman Catholic Church gave it to you, you're actually a pagan. So do the research. Don't think of this virgin concept came from Christ and Mary. Now see, he's saying the same thing that we're telling you. But watch him put a butt in there. Watch his butt. It's coming sometime soon. And see, Satan's whole plan was to infiltrate Christ's word and inject paganism within Christianity to deceive the earth and lead them into the one world satanic religion. To make everybody pagan using Christ's name. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So when we talk about the virgin birth, we're not deceived. We don't now, he just went to Ezekiel not, uh, 8. All right, and I'm going to go into Ezekiel 7. 7 and 20. We're going to get back to the true image. While he's trying to play the abracadabra trick, we're going to pull the true, the true image up out of here. As for the beauty of his ornaments, he set it in majesty. But they made the image of their abominations and of their distasteful things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. 
how far they got to set it. It's in the rain. It's in the clouds. It's called the rainbow. We had it in our hands. It was there before the flood. Even after the flood, we had we we had an image of it that uh, Moses and the children of Israel coming out of Egypt made through the Most High. And this one here that was made is called the Lord tried to take the rap for it. He calls it his art. All right, watch what's going on. You have Lord, Lord God, God. Okay, what's up above happens down beneath. If this here is telling me that right there, as for the beauty of his ornaments, he said it in majesty. All right. Now I can take that and I can go to Ezekiel uh, 28 and start reading inside there. All right. That's one level of it. That's a pretty high level. I don't know if you're ready for that level yet or not. All right. So we're gonna keep it on a little smaller level. And as for the beauty of his ornament he said it in majesty all right but they made the image of their abominations and of their distasteful things thereof therefore have I set it far from them how far does it have to be this is a flag but I don't want to go into going to that I just wanted to pull that up out of there people who did this if you go down to 24 it tells you it's the heathens who did this and when you get in there you'll find I am the Lord that's who he worships Lord who was the first person Eve gave thanks to she gave honor to, she gave praise to. Who talked to Cain? Lord, check your info. That the word virgin doesn't mean a person who has never had intercourse. It doesn't mean that. That's what you've been taught in the Western society. There's more. It so happened It so happened that this mother and child you see right here where it talks about their set women weeping for Tamas. Okay? I'm going to go to Acts 12 and 8. But before I go there, I want you to understand. Okay? Let's go back into uh, 8 and 14 in Ezekiel. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house. Whose house? The Lord's house. 
Whose house was it? Was it Ron's house? It was the Lord's house. Which was towards the what way? North. Where did we just read that at? Could that be Isaiah? Could that be Isaiah 14? Isaiah 14 and 14. What does that say? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregations in the so side of the north. Whose house? The Lord's house. You read that, people. This is why your color codes are very important. You need to watch, keep watching some of my older works. I know they ain't all that professional, neither is, neither is this one, and it probably will never be. But go back and watch. I'm giving you a lot of hints before we got started. Whose house, people? Whose house? The Lord's house. Which way was it? North. Who says they're going to do this? Lucifer. What was he? A man. Is this the man? He's through. In a different tongue. So the virgin birth is nothing new. See, and this is what people don't say when they claim that we're teaching wrong concerning the virgin child. They don't talk about none of this information I'm bringing you forth. I'm bringing forth there. They don't talk about the fact that you've been deceived into following an anti-Christ child. Don't forget the Roman Catholic Church gave you the new teachings of, of Mary and Christ and gave you a doctrine outside of the true teachings to make you believe it was so. But when you break down the scriptures precept upon precept, you know it's not so at all. So the deception is not just Sunday worship. The deception is not just them giving you Jesus and God in the wrong name. Now I'm going to stop that for a second. I'm going to go to uh, Lamentations. And this is just one of them. And I just got this. I just ran across it. Okay, I'm going to go to Lamentations and I want to go to uh, verse, I mean chapter 2, verse, I'm sorry, verse 7. Whose house? Whose house are we talking about? The Lord's house in the north. The man. The Lord has ca cast off his altar. He has abhorred his sanctuary. He has given up into the hands of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the who? Lord, as in the day of Solomon's feast. The Lord has proposed to destroy. Where did we read that at before? people could that be in Genesis people could that be in Genesis to destroy Genesis 6 and what 7 Genesis 6 and 7 Genesis 6 and 7 and the Lord said I will destroy the destroyer he's through but this is just part one on him. Because he's going to say that I didn't give him an opportunity. So this is part one. Get ready for part two. If you if y'all understand what I'm saying, leave me a comment. If you can feel what I'm trying to tell you, don't just sit there, write something. Let it be heard. These demon liars. 
Expose them. Rip down their altars. <laughs>